The intent of this video is to discuss why World War II bomber gunners eliminated tracers in their ammo belt mixes. Virtually all World War II U.S. bombers and fighters adopted the 50 caliber cartridge as their standard armament. The gun of choice to shoot this cartridge was the Browning AN M2 machine gun. This chart represents the U.S. Army Air Force's specifications and parameters of the M2 machine gun based on a March 1944 armaments document. This chart lists additional Browning M2 characteristics from a World War II training manual. An exploded view of the gun's components is shown in this chart. There were four general types of 50 caliber cartridges adopted by bomber gunners. The cartridges were mixed in the ammo belt and were modified throughout the war based on combat experience, threat, and lessons learned. The tips of the cartridge bullets were painted to indicate the type of bullet. This chart lists four main types of cartridges World War II bombers adopted based on a 1944 aircrew gunnery manual. The second row describes characteristics of the red tip tracer 50 caliber bullet. This image identifies the cutaway components of the tracer cartridge from a 1942 ammunition school booklet. The bullet consists of three parts. The bullet solid slug is fabricated from an alloy of 97.5% lead and 2.5% antimony. The bullet's jacket is fabricated from an alloy of 90% copper and 10% zinc. The bullet's igniter and tracer compounds are highlighted in this image. The tracer compound is ignited by the powder charge and burns with a visible flame. The bullets burn bright enough to be followed by the bomber gunner, even in daylight. The weight of the tracer's bullet components are listed in this image. The tracer compound will start burning at 150 yards from the machine gun's muzzle, as defined in this page from the World War II Ordnance School ammunition document. The document also indicates tracer ballistics are essentially the same as ball and armor piercing bullets for ranges out to 1500 yards. This chart indicates that the World War II M1 tracers ballistics align with the ballistics of other 50 caliber cartridges for ranges out to 1000 yards as defined in this 1957 Ammunition for Aircraft Guns Technical Manual. U.S. fighters' effective firing range is out to 400 yards, as defined in this World War II fighter gunnery manual. B-17 and B-24 bomber gunner ranges are within 600 yards. B-29 gunner's effective range is defined as 900 yards, as shown in this B-29 gunnery manual. These distances are well within the tracer's effective ballistic compatible range of 1,000 yards. Early war U.S. bomber ammo belts consisted of a repeating mix of four armor piercing and a single tracer, as shown in this view. The ammo belts would be delivered in 98-pound ammo crates, or the ammo belts could be constructed by the base's armorer by connecting loose rounds with links as requested. The ammo crates identify the ammo belt mix. This ammo box lists four armor piercing and a tracer as the repeating ammo belt mix. Vintage World War II photographs show ammo crates with ammo mixes of four armor piercing and a single tracer, as shown in this image or this image. To increase the combat effectiveness against fuel tanks, the revised ammo belt swapped two of the armor piercing cartridges for two incendiary cartridges. The revised repeating ammo belts were two armor piercing, two incendiary, and a single tracer or a 221 ammo mix. This image shows an ammo crate with the 221 mix as described. B 29 bomber turrets adopted the 221 ammo mix in their first 25 missions against Japan, as defined in this February 1945 Operations Analysis Report combat performance of the remote control turrets of the B-29 aircraft. The report recommends increasing both the armor piercing and incendiary loadouts to increase combat effectiveness. This was due to the large number of enemy aircraft destroyed by explosions and fire, as discussed in this section of the report. The incendiary bullets fill consisted of 35 grams, as discussed in this 1984 Military Explosives Army Technical Manual. 50% of the fill is a magnesium alloy, and the other 50% is a barium nitrate compound. In combat, the incendiary cartridge was not that effective due to its low penetrating power. The final World War II U.S. bomber ammo belt mixes consisted of 100% armor-piercing incendiary cartridges as defined in this 1945 Armament in Air War document. In fact, none of the Allied or German fighters or bombers adopted tracers in their ammo mixes at war's end. The 100% 
armor-piercing incendiary ammo crate can be seen in this image next to a B-17G model. The armor-piercing incendiary ammo bullet tips are silver. This crew member is loading the lower turret of a B-29 with 100% belted 50 caliber armor-piercing incendiary ammo. So why were tracers adopted and then removed from the ammo belt mixes? Tracers were adopted to aid in aiming, signal the location of enemy fighters to bomber gunners, and to strike via an enemy aircraft, causing the bomber interceptor to break off its attack. Tracer bullets caused gunner accuracy issues that were never resolved. Light from the burning tracers produced optical abnormalities distorting the actual bullet's path from the gunner's perspective. This chart from a 1944 aircrew gunnery manual describes the optical distortion or false tricks gunners would need to account for. Tracer cutback effect would make the bomber gunners think you are hitting your target when you're actually not. Bomber gunners often depended upon tracers entirely and neglected their gun sights. Tracers confused gunners who should be relying upon proven deflection shooting methods in tracking, ranging, and firing on attacking bomber interceptors. This November 1943 Air Force gunnery pamphlet warns bomber gunners not to depend on tracers as they will fool you. This 912-page U.S. Army Air Forces in World War II Part 6 document indicates that tracers gave erroneous impressions of the bullet's true path and that gunnery schools adopted position firing methods in October of 1943. Interestingly, this German POW fighter pilot claimed during a POW interrogation that German bomber interceptors welcomed tracers as they indicated which part of the formations were more heavily defended as described in this June 1944 8th Army Air Force's Appendix B historical report. On the other hand, this 388 page May 1945 Battlefield Experiences Lessons Learned document indicates that captured German infantry soldiers attributed the heavy usage of ground tracers in their failure to attack Bastogne during the Battle of the Bulge. Sometimes bomber gunners would place tracers as part of the last 50 rounds or so in a belt as a visual cue that they were low on ammo. This would only apply to gunners without access to their ammo boxes. This chart outlines the ballistics of a World War II 50 caliber armor-piercing incendiary cartridge. The table lists the bullets dropped due to gravity and time of flight based on the plane's speed and altitude. This chart is valid for fighters or the forward-facing bomber guns. In summary, the bomber gunner ammo mixes varied throughout the war based on lessons learned and threat. Tracers were eliminated due to the optical distortions they caused. The Allied ammo belt of choice at war's end was based on 100% armor-piercing incendiary cartridge. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting, or subscribing to the channel, World War II U.S. Bombers.